don't you miss that feeling? Don't you miss this? You know, just <laughs> put at it like, don't, don't you miss it? Well, I miss those moments. Mm -hmm. I miss moments when, you know, I'll be on stage and people will sing my songs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people send me clips of my songs playing in an event yes. and people dancing to them. You know, yeah. it feels good. Uh, I love, I, I still love music. I, I said I went on a break. Uh, and that break, I don't know how long it would be. Mm. I finally became this person who everybody is talking about singing my songs. You know, yeah. I would go for a show and I would see how people are responding to my music, singing word to word to my music, you know. That at some point got into my head. Mm. There's this celebrity syndrome that can kill you. Because you're always used to being appreciated everywhere. You're used to praised. Praised everywhere. And that can get into your head until it makes you feel like you are this important person. And you forget that you're not as important as your impact. Sanballats will always be there. They'll always mock you. They'll always say, oh, he can't amount to anything. So when you allow people to define you, and to define what you do, to define the results you have, then you get into that trap of competition. But when you allow yourself to be defined by what God says about you, yeah. then every other voice becomes irrelevant. I'm not married. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm growing older. And I don't know. I don't know if I'll get married. I don't know. Why? Maybe I've not been... Uh, very lucky in this field. Mm -hmm. Relationships are not easy. Yes. Um, I I don't know when I'll get married. Yeah. Does it bother you too? Sometimes it does. A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Gugi. I know you guys have been asking where is Jimmy. I also asked myself the same question and I said, Mbona na juuliza hizi maswali zote. Say just DM him and say, "Hey Jimmy, how have you been? Can we have a conversation?" And honestly, when he replied, I, I keep telling you guys this thing ni favor ya God. I know you all know him. Uh, there is no need to go, you know, on and about this introduction but I'm very very much ready to hear from him because I feel like uh, he's someone who has gone through a couple of things and when I see people still standing still rebuilding still doing something even if the whole world was like now nah, you don't get to be here you don't belong here and like I'm like who are you this is someone this is a child of God and we don't get to decide people's fate only God gets to decide that and I'm really in interested in hearing where has he been what is he up to also what is he doing with his life and i know you are also telling me lin maliza introduction we go straight to hearing from jimmy but you know i have to pay a couple of bills here i want to say thank you so much huh, to our incredible partners at optiven for always coming through and i keep saying if you are looking into owning a property with a credible source why don't you try optiven they have an amazing property in vipingo and you can, I say, when if you want to retire na hakuna pressure and you are looking for a property, you can always check that property out. It's facing the Indian Ocean. It's very beautiful. And I love that they are still celebrating so many years of positive transformation. So check them out. And you don't have to get the one in Malindi. Wapige waulize optiven. What else do you have for me? And also to say thank you to you guys for being incredible supporters of our work. We are heading to 1 million subscribers. I see your efforts. I see your love. I acknowledge it and I want to know that you are part of this beautiful community that we have formed together. And now without further ado, please allow me to let my guest today introduce himself. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Why are we laughing? <laughs> Why are we laughing? Hi Jimmy, how are you? I'm alright. Are you good? Great, I'm good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling... Um, Honored to be here with you. I appreciate you know, that. You, appreciate you are a force to reckon with. You think so? And I must, uh, I must appreciate you for what you're doing. Yeah. You've been such an inspiration to a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate. I'm excited it. to be here. I was you, looking forward. You feel yeah. home? Wow, this is home. This is <laughs> literally. 
yeah. <laughs> karibu sana <coughs> but they've had me call you Jimmy but mm-hmm. maybe for the people who are watching you for the very first time would you please introduce yourself yes my name is James Ngaita I like calling myself Motheremu Motheremu means I want to prosper oh. uh, I hail from uh, Kiambu County yes uh, a lot of people know me as Jimmy Gate from the music scene mm-hmm. yeah and I'm born again Okay. Yes. Good. Uh, you know, <laughs> can I remind you something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember which year this is, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm in school, right? Mm-hmm. In a very cold place in Kinangop. Okay. Called Magumu uh, High School. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so after church on Sunday, yeah. we hear, hey, Jimmy Gate is coming. <laughs> 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 so you know how they wana yeah. waleta new water kwa yeah. dining hall yeah. like we were so waiting for Jimmy Gate you know for real? you are in Magumu yeah oh I my goodness Magumu, i remember right? that day hey so now <laughs> see you know what we used to uh-huh. do when the girls here the celebs are coming <laughs> that is the day you will comb your hair i don't know how <laughs> Oh my hey, goodness that is the day when Jimmy Gate is there singing you just want him to notice you so <laughs> Uh, so, we magumu, it's on a Sunday. Yeah. We are we are we are chilling. Mm-hmm. You and then you show up yeah. with a couple of other people. Yes. And you had this necklace beard it was like beard ah, beads and something, right? right? And then you were just oh there. My goodness. You know that was such a long You still remember that day? I remember <laughs> that day. That was such a long time, a long, a long, long time, ago. time ago, you know? <laughs> and to us it used to be such mm-hmm. a big deal yeah. when you hear Jimmy Gate is coming to school yeah. and you're like, man, you came from <laughs> far. I've come from far. You you came from yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you came from but far. But you blessed God us. You know, that was mm-hmm. a good day. Wow. Of course I have to admit, I mm-hmm. don't think majority of us were in that place mm-hmm. because the music was music in mm-hmm. i feel it's in your teenage years when yeah. you know the guys are sh- coming to mm-hmm. school mm-hmm. so you are just there yeah. even imagining maybe this is my future husband but <laughs> you know like anyways those were good days yes, you've come were. from far i i used to do a lot of high school missions yeah i think that's where my ministry started mm-hmm. or kick kick started from because i had so much passion for the youth i had so much passion to make it in life <coughs> and having come from you know the village being raised up in the village went to primary secondary and college in village i was always looking forward to a time when i would come to nairobi and i remember any time i would come to nairobi yeah. was such an amazing time for me like i would reminisce that over the days when i go back you know and i kept saying one day i want to live in nairobi and i i, I didn't know how that was going to happen because mm-hmm. we didn't have friends relatives or anyone that was in my networks mm-hmm. that would bring me here the only yeah. thing i had was hope and faith that one day i would come here and you know having lived here for i think more than 20 years now mm-hmm. i i can Testify. i can i can see where i've come from yeah. and it's it's amazing to remember those days no the, those were I used to do those high school missions yes i think ma'am. i did almost um i must have done like 300 or Three to four hundred schools wow. during that time. For real, you know when Muhadara hit. Yes, I was in Yeri. I had come there for like a whole month, and um, I was doing rounds in high schools. Yeah. And I would do this high school, and the principal would be so excited about what I was doing. He would call like a couple of principals, and they would literally stop their classes to have me come in. Like yeah. I would do a morning, an afternoon, and an evening session in three different wow. schools and I wasn't even calling the principals they were calling other principals hey, you need to have this guy in your school he's really motivational and I would have a lot of talks plus the music so that was working really well for me yes. um and so th- the passion for not just ministering but also to make it in life started a long time ago good huh? and, and and so that's yeah. part to, yeah. to talk to me about I, I'm not like i'm not more interested in the nairobi part mm-hmm. could you talk to me <laughs> about life before, before. the nairobi mm. this is you growing up in a place where you think i will never come out of this place mm. how was life like for you i mean i was born in the village i grew up in the village you know i i, I literally go back to the village even today yeah and the same school i used to go to is still 
pretty much the same, mm -hmm. the same shopping center. Nothing has changed, it's still the same. And so I came from this local place, you know, going to school without shoes. Yeah. Um, and I remember when my dad would buy me those sandak shoes, because my dad used to work in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. He would bring me the sandak shoes. Trust me, that was like gold to me. Like, yeah. uh, I remember one day I wore the shoes to school, to the primary school. I wasn't supposed to wear the shoes during school days. It was only for Sundays. Um, my dad would go um, on Monday and come back on Tuesday mm -hmm. evening. Mm -hmm sometimes on Wednesday, and then he would go back on Thursday, come back on Friday or Saturday yeah. morning. So on this particular day, it was on a, man, on, on a Tuesday morning. So I, I go to school with the shoes, thinking that my dad's come back in the evening, only to find my dad at home wearing the shoes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was beaten up. Would have back here to your Sunday. <laughs> So, Yay. yeah, so I, I, I grew up in that simple background yeah. um, where I didn't necessarily get what I needed, you know, or what I wanted. It, it was a struggle to even go to school. Uh, I wanted to go to a boarding school, but unfortunately, my dad couldn't afford that. Mm -hmm. So I went to high school. And from where I used to live to where the school was, was probably like um, 15 to 20 kilometers. So I would walk home from home every morning to school and back in the evening. So mm -hmm. probably that's why I have a small body because yes. I, I, I did a lot of exercise yeah. back then. Yeah. <laughs> so uh -huh. that, that was the kind of life I used to live. But here's the thing, even as I was growing up, I was always aspirational. I always aspired to be a great person. I always aspired to make it in life. I, I never liked the village life. I always told myself one day I want to get out of this place. I was always looking forward to getting out of the village. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I was done with high school, I only did Christmas. Immediately after that, I left the village. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any connections, but I just wanted to leave. And I, I went out to look for a life for myself mm -hmm. in Kijabe. Yes. And I lived there for quite a while. Yeah. When I was there, I... I felt God calling me into the ministry and I joined Bible school and I stayed there for four years. I did um, a high diploma in theology. And then after that, you know, the calling for music was so much in me because I was always singing. Um, I joined a, a singing group in Kijabe. So we used to visit high schools. Yeah. And I think that was one that of was the times. One, yes. No, wait, it was after that because mm -hmm. I started singing my own songs uh, after I quit the group. Yes. And here's the reason I quit the group. We used to sing other people's songs. We would go for weekend challenges in high schools or in church services. And <clears throat> we used to sing other people's songs. We would practice and go and perform the songs. And it reached a point and I was, I was like, I think we need to start writing our own songs. And I shared that with the group, but they didn't seem to buy into it because they couldn't see where I was singing. And um, it, it became a problem to me. I was like, I was, I was feeling stagnant. I always want to be on the move. But these guys want to stay here. They want to stay, you know, in the same place, doing the same things. And I'm feeling like it's time to move on. And so I literally de decided to move into my own self. I started writing my own songs. And guess what happened? As soon as I decided to quit the group, as hard as it was, I didn't even know how I was going to do it on my own. But as soon as I decided to quit the group, I didn't even go for two weeks. A friend of mine comes to me and tells me, hey, there's this new missionary that has come to Kijabe because there's a very big uh, missionary school mm -hmm. uh, for, for the whites. Mm -hmm. Well, even Kenyans go there. It's mm -hmm. like Brayburn. Yeah. So my friend comes and says, oh, there's this new missionary that has come. He's the music director of the school. Mm -hmm. And he, he's really, really interested to working with the locals. Mm -hmm. I'd like to introduce you to him. So she introduced me to the guy. The guy likes me. He's a white. From, he had come from the U.S. Mm -hmm. so um, and, and, and when he met me, he saw the passion in me. He saw that I loved music. And, and, and what he did is he invited me to the school. He started t teaching me how to play piano. Wow. And because of the passion, I was, I was getting in so fast. Like, he would teach me something today, and I would go and practice it. By the following day, I know everything. 
and he was getting encouraged to teach me more yes. and eventually he started to teach me how to record how to produce eventually he 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 gave me access to the music building wow. he gave me access to the studio he gave me access he actually gave me an extra key so i'm not paying school fees but i had an extra key to the music building and he told me look whenever we don't have any classes just come in and do whatever mm-hmm. eventually he saw the passion is too much he gave me a mattress and he told me you you can stay here all all, all the night if you want to and that's when i started writing my first album which became very big in kijabe yes unfortunately as big as it was in kijabe when i came to the new waters in nairobi and i brought it to the first station they were like now we can play this the quality was so bad to me in kijabe it was, was like, amazing I mean, i mean it was the hit <laughs> when i come to nairobi yeah. it's another level and so um as much as it was a little bit discouraging it was motivating for me and here's the thing a lot of people want to wait until things happen or get to a particular place for them to decide that they can now do it no you got to start from where you are and work from there why because god does not ask you for what you don't have oh god needs what you have to use it to get what you want but a lot of people are waiting to get what they need to get themselves to where they want to go no God is not interested in what you don't have. He already knows that you don't have what you need. So whatever it is that you have is what he's going to use to produce what you want. What's in your hand? What's in your hand? What's in your hand? That's, hand? that's exactly Moses? what he asked Moses. What do you have right now? Don't wait until you get to a particular place or get these connections or have this or do this or do that. No. Where you are is where you ought to start from. because God is a reproducer. He works with you to reproduce. That's why when he created Adam, he told him, "Go and reproduce, go and multiply." So God has given us the ability to multiply. Mm-hmm. But we have to have that belief in ourselves that we can reproduce. We can not only children because m- many people think that when God talked about go and multiply, yes. He was talking about, you know, um um bearing children. but it was a holistic uh uh command from god you need to reproduce whatever it is that you have if you have a talent you can reproduce that if you have a skill you can reproduce that whatever it is that you have whether it's a business idea you can reproduce that mm-hmm. but you got to start from a point of believing that it's possible to be done because when i believe that i can do it even if i didn't have any resources yeah here's what happens when you believe the universe sort of listens to your spirit because the universe communicates with us and it starts opening doors it starts bringing the people that are supposed to come on our way how did i meet that missionary two weeks after i quit the group and that missionary was so instrumental in helping me start off my career if i did not stop probably god wouldn't have allowed me to meet that missionary yes so Many times we are blocking our blessings and our open doors and our connections because we are afraid. We are afraid of what if this doesn't happen? What I always say is what if it happens? So I I am always leaning on the positive side, not on the negative side. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are afraid of trying and moving on because they are always afraid. What if this business idea doesn't work? Well, to me I say if it doesn't work well, I have learned another way no, or not on how not to do something. Beautiful. I don't look at myself as a failure when I fail. It is the it is the idea that failed, it's not me that failed. So I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying no matter how long it takes. This is what the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Mm-hmm. Knock and the door shall be opened. But the original translation of that scripture actually denotes persistence. It says ask and keep asking. The, the the original Hebrew manuscript wrote it like that. Ask, keep asking, and eventually you will get answered. Mm. Knock and keep knocking. So with God, persistence is key. In fact, patience is one of the greatest virtues that you can have. It's one of the greatest fruits that you can have. So a lot of people want things to happen so fast. But here's the thing, even our fathers of faith, people like Abraham, God tells him, "Hey, you're going to have a son." Only for him to wait for 25 years for him to get the son. 
I mean, you know, when we read, we don't really capture the essence of the long time that someone had to wait. But here's the thing, that time when God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you with a son, it looked like it was going to happen the next Tomorrow. year. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna jiggy with it tonight. And then and to, she's very right, <laughs> we good. For Twenty-five years he's waiting and he's wondering, okay, God spoke. Why why is it not happening? Until he gets to a point where he he sleeps with his maiden. Mm. But here's the thing: when God speaks and tells you something, no matter how long it takes, keep waiting. The Bible says, even if it tarries, wait for it, for it will surely come to pass. Wow. And that's my mantra. I'm a very patient person. It doesn't matter how long I wait for something. I'll still keep waiting. I'll still keep believing. This is what I told myself. I'm never going to give up in my life. I would rather die trying than give up. Because here's the thing. When you finish your journey of life, you're going to give a report of what you did. Some of the people who never became what we call success, will actually be very successful in heaven, will have more accolades than people who achieved a lot of things. Why? Because they were patient. And they died trying. They never gave up on God. They never gave up on their destinies. They never gave up on themselves. And that is going to be rewarded. Because some people are meant to keep inspiring others not to give up, even, even if they, they themselves never get there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say that again. Some people <laughs> are meant to keep yeah. inspiring other people, yes. even if they themselves don't get never there. get there. Look at Moses. He never got to the promised land. But he inspired a lot of people. The Bible says that he was like a god. The children of Israel, the Egyptians, even Pharaoh looked at him as a god because God told him, as you go there, I'll make you look like a god in their eyes. But even if he looked like a god, yet he didn't get to the promised land. But look at how much he inspires us that even if you don't get there, sometimes your duty or your calling is to inspire others to get there, even if you yourself doesn't get there. So a lot of people have this description of what success is, which is so mis misconstrued because of the worldly wow. policies and the worldly um, way of looking at things. But the definition of success in the eyes of God or in the vocabulary of God is totally different from our, from our way of looking at success. Mm. As we describe success as, oh, he is driving a beautiful car. Oh, he lives in a beautiful house. Oh, he's done this, he's done that. To God, that is not what success is. Success is about impact. Success is about how do you influence people in the eyes of God. You see, there's another, um, there's another um, truth that hit me and changed my perspective on life. You see, we have two worlds. We have the spirit world and we have the physical world that we live in. Now, you can be so famous and popular and rich and wealthy in the physical world, yet very poor in the spirit world. Because in the spirit world, our recognitions are different. They're based on different things. They're not based on what we on the physical world base our success on. Mm -hmm. The spirit world, look at the souls you're affecting, looks at the impact you're having for souls, whether positively or negatively. The kingdom of the devil yeah. will look at you and see, how much impact is this guy having or this woman having for us? And therefore, they'll give you accolades based on the impact you're having on souls. The same case with the kingdom of heaven. They'll look at you based on how many souls are you affecting for us? Are you a good ambassador for us? Or are you just there? A lot of people may be having a lot of success, a lot of fame. But in the spirit world, you can be a celebrity in the physical but nobody knows you in the spirit. Because in the spirit, we're recognized with stars. You have a star. Everybody has a star. That's why when Jesus was born, wow. there was a star that was recognized by the wise man. Now, let me, let me tell you something, and a lot of people don't know this. These wise men, people don't know who they were. Because we were never taught. You know, even during Christmas, they, they are represented or depicted as these, you know, simple guys who came. They were wise, yes, and they came and gave Jesus a little bit of gifts. Mm -hmm. That's far from it. The wise men were extremely powerful figures. 
in those ancient times. These were people who would install kings or de-install kings, if there's a word like that. Mm -hmm. At their word, they would install a king and they would also uninstall a king. Our stars are recognized based on impact. The impact you have determines how popular you are in the spirit. Mm -hmm. When you die, that's the end of your life. So the question is, what kind of star are you in the spirit? What will the spirit world say about you? You know, and for me, that changed my perspective. I never pursue fame. You realize I've been offline for a long time because this, this really hit me. I was like, I need to refashion myself. I need to reinvent myself. I need to rethink more about my life. Because here's the thing, people will celebrate you so much. But the question is, is heaven celebrating you? Because if heaven is not celebrating you, you are just nothing. <laughs> you, are, you are nothing. Because our lives are so short. You live 70, 80, 100 years. But there's eternity that's coming. That's a million years, plus a million, plus a billion years, and a billion. And that cycle keeps reoccurring. So how we live our short lives determines how our eternity will look like. So for me, I'm more focused on my eternity, not about you know what people say or think. Mm -hmm. And the reason I actually pulled out of social media, pulled out of the limelight, is because I wanted to get into terms with that reality. Because the reality of life is not in the physical life, it's in the spirit. And a lot of people don't understand that what you wake up to do every morning is not the reality. What you're doing right now is not the reality. The reality is in the spirit. So how you're, de how you're termed in the spirit is what describes you. And so if you don't come into terms with that, then you live like a normal person who is living a normal life in a normal world, thinking that life is normal. And that's why you say YOLO, you only live once. So you live your fullest, go party, go do whatever you want to do. And people who have that kind of mentality never think about the future. They're just thinking about today. Where are we partying tonight? What's happening this weekend? Oh, yes. Where are the party at? Where, where's the party at? You know, they're only thinking about the physical things of life. But the moment that reality hits you, you start looking at life from a different perspective. I'm not looking for people's accolades. That's why I don't post anything in, in regards to me. Of course, I'll start uh, at some point. But the reason I pulled out it's because I wanted to get into terms with that. I wanted to disconnect from what people say yeah. or think about me. Because when you're a celebrity or when you're in the public limelight, there's this celebrity syndrome that can kill you. Because you're always used to being appreciated everywhere. You're used to praised, praised everywhere. And that can get into your head until it makes you feel like you are this important person. And you forget that you're not as important as your impact. If you don't have positive impact in the spirit, then you are just nobody. Whoa, profound. I want to address fame, that part of fame. Did it ever get to you? Of course it did. Uh. Of course it did at some point. Um, when I started music, um, I didn't have a whole, a whole lot of understanding of what being a celebrity is or being in the public limelight means. Um, and so when I finally became this person who everybody is talking about, singing my songs, you know, yeah. I would go for a show. I remember when we did Safari Come Live and um, we would go for, for shows in different towns and I would see how people are responding to my music, singing word to word to my music. You know, that at some point got into my head. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it started drifting me from my purpose, you know, because when you have a lot of money, when you have a lot of fame, when you have a lot of power, there's a very thin line between you being arrogant and being confident, you being proud and being, you know, a strong personality. Yeah. And, and, and many times it's very easy to cross over to being proud, to being arrogant, because you feel like you have it all. Yes. You control people at your word. Uh, a lot of things happen. You know. So uh, that syndrome is very, very dangerous. It's like cancer. It can kill you. And so I wanted to disconnect myself from that syndrome. 
and and I see it in a lot of celebrities. You know, even the way you talk to people. You know, I learned how to respect people. I respect even uh, a soldier, get man. You know, I want to have a conversation with him because he is as important. Some of these people you think are not anything, yeah. and you think you are something. Are more important in the spirit than you. Oh, you know, they are recognized more because maybe they are very kind-hearted. They they are very nice to people. They do good things for people, and above all. Maybe they have Jesus in their lives. And you may have all the money. You may mistreat them. But in the spirit, look at the story of the rich man and Lazarus. He was a beggar. He was begging to eat the crumbs of the food that the rich man was, you know, throwing on the table. But when the flip side came, the afterlife, the rich man is in the lake of fire and Lazarus in, is in Abraham's bosom. They are in two different places. One is suffering and one is in wow. paradise. So these realities, when you start thinking about them, when they start hitting your head and your heart and your soul, then you start looking at people from a very different perspective. You start looking at life from a very different perspective. And so that, that, that is one of the things that, that I've been having, you know, looking at life from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. and, redefining my life not for the people but for myself and for my future for my destiny mm -hmm. i don't live for anybody i live for me i live for my future i live for my purpose um and so right now i'm at a place where i wouldn't really care what someone thinks about me i wouldn't really care about what people say about me i am over and done with that there's a time it really affected me but it doesn't matter what anyone can say right now about me lean let me tell you I am so strong, you can, you can bring me down by, by your words. Because I understand about words. I understand about thoughts. Here's the thing. When you care so much about what people say, in the first place, those people that you're caring about, you don't even care about you. You're so much busy caring about what they think or they're saying about you. They don't even care about you in the first place. They don't. So why, why are you spending a lot of time caring about people who don't care about you. They care about you when you have something to offer. The moment you don't, they'll go to the next person who has what they want. Period. And they'll leave you. So live your life. Be that person who says, I want to be focused on what I want to achieve for myself, for the world. I want to be a better person. I want to make the world a better place in my small or big way or whatever way. But the moment you start focusing on people, in most cases, you start getting into the competition syndrome. You want to be like this or that. You want to be like this other person. Yes. Do you know why a lot of people are killing themselves? And committing suicide and running through a lot of all these negative things that are happening, like depression, stress. One of the biggest reason is competition. The spirit of competition. Mm -hmm. Why is she doing so well and I'm not? Why does he have a, a, a beautiful woman and I don't? Why, why does he have a good job and I don't? A nice house. The spirit of competition. That spirit is so dangerous. The devil wants you to focus on others, not on you. Because if you can get you to focus on others, you will forget about yourself. There's no one that was created without potential. I mean, God wants you to reproduce. So how will you reproduce without potential, without capacity? Everybody has a capacity. That's why when Jesus gave the parable of the talents, one was given five, one, two, and one was given one. Why did this master give them different talents in terms of amount? It's because he knew their capacity. God knows your capacity. But here's the thing. Even the one that was given one, the master knew that he had capacity for that one. What did he do? He buried it. The one who had two and the one who had five, they reproduced the talents. Everybody has a capacity, mm -hmm. no matter how small your capacity is, because all of us are gifted differently. But with whatever capacity that lies inside you, it still can be reproduced to have you live the life that God created you to live mm -hmm. without you focusing on others. What you need to ask yourself is, what environment am I supposed to be in based on my potential, based on my capacity mm. and then thrive there what's my domain Put the work. yeah 
I feel like we're in everyone's environment. <laughs> so you miss out on your environment. Exactly. And you won't thrive there. That's Look at you, for instance. You know, and, and I'm not telling you this because I'm here. I've watched you and how you've grown from Tuko. And now you're here running your own brand. Um, I was actually, I, w- I was actually with you, of course, online, yeah. when you were launching your brand, you know, your, your YouTube channel. I watched how it grew for the first two, three days. And it was like, boom, like, I was like, whoa. And then look at where you are now, because you're doing what you're good at. But here's the thing, a lot of other people want to be like you. Not necessarily because they should be like you. You're thriving because you're doing what what you're capable of doing. Your capacity is just, um, is it, you're doing what your capacity allows you to do. Someone else will want to do what you do. They'll do interviews like you do. They'll ask questions like, they'll watch you a lot to analyze you so they can copy you. Here's the thing, if they can do what they are capable of, even if they're doing whatever interviews they're doing, yeah. they can also thrive. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. That the moment you start copying others, you are already on the trajectory of competition, and competition is a killer of your destiny. Mm, powerful. You see, God created you for a particular purpose, to be in a particular environment. Now, Imagine if you're employed by this boss, you have a contract with them, and then you go work for this boss. You don't have a contract with them. You come to this boss who you have a contract with at the end of the month, you want to get paid by him. He's going to ask you, are you crazy? You never worked for me. You went to work for the other boss. You go get paid by the boss you work for. Now, the other boss never had a contract with you. So you go to him and ask him, oh. can you pay me? He's going to ask you, I don't have a contract with Where you. is it written? And You worked, yes, fine, but I didn't, I didn't have any agreement with you, so I don't owe you anything. That's what a lot of people will face during judgment day. Yes. Ask your question. Uh-huh. You are in your domain. You're in your environment. You're serving your purpose. You're a God. And then there are people who think you shouldn't be doing what yeah. you're doing. You're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. You suck. What's yes. this song? Yes. What is he saying? What is he talking about? From a human perspective, mm. what does that do to you? And how do you come back to, nah, this is not about them. Yes. This is about God. How do you still continue to thrive in your domain mm-hmm. knowing now nah, nah, I'm doing it for God and also knowing I don't want this to affect how I'm feeling? I think it has to do with the relationship you have with God mm-hmm. because if you have a good relationship with God it's like when a child is having a good relationship with a father yeah. they have regular communications if your father tells you how beautiful you are every morning, you are my daughter, you, you're so great, you're amazing. Go out there and conquer the world. You know, It doesn't matter how many men will tell you that you're not good, you're not great. You'll keep remembering what your dad tells you. And if you have this very good communion with your father, that is so strong, it's stronger than any other voice that any other person tells you. A lot of people, allow themselves to be defined by people and not by God. So when you allow people to define you and to define what you do, to define the results you have, then you get into that trap of competition. But when you allow yourself to be defined by what God says about you, then every other voice becomes irrelevant. Mind you, even in the Bible, prophets were never popular. Even Jesus wasn't popular, especially with the who is who in the society. Jesus wasn't as popular with them, but he focused on his mandate, on what he came came to do. Most important thing is to identify, is this what God wants me to do? As long as you have the conviction, and as long as you know that God is guiding you and leading you, then forget about what everybody is going to say. San Balats will always be there. They'll always mock you. They'll always say, oh, he can amount to anything. And I'm sure there are people who said, 
huwa ataenda mahali you know what yes, i was told <laughs> I was given 6 months but you know mm-hmm. but you kept on and look at where you are what if you listen to those voices but this is the part cuz sometimes you are listening and it's getting to you mm-hmm. right sometimes someone is like ah look at her mm-hmm. or look at him look at his music and because you're human it gets into you sometimes and you have to check yourself yes. out of it real fast because the more power you give it the more strong it becomes i wouldn't say oh did it not affect me hearing someone had said to me to me as a of course now you feel like why why would you do because you're only human you know yes. and i was watching you even at a, you even broke down because of yeah. how hard this was mm. for you but now hearing know the connection you have with your father Be- having a good relationship with your father does not mean when it's emotional you won't cry of course you still cry mm. but i feel like how i've navigated it i have to check myself out yes of that situation have to remember who am i cuz the more you let it get into you it yes. can drain you it and it can you. send you to a really bad place yes yeah uh, and 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 people don't understand that the spirit world is extremely powerful and it's real and the spirit world is what runs this world you know it's not the physical things of life it's not yeah. your skills mm-hmm. it's not your looks i keep asking people this question for instance look at our government look at all these people who have been appointed and, and i want i want you to get me right have you seen all these beautiful women you know gorgeous looking hippie and all that uh i think the ones who carry the day you know these men who have biceps who have you know the looks why is it that the most successful people usually are not necessarily the most good looking i mean truth be told why is it that some of these great people who we see in the limelight in government offices yes are not usually the most eloquent they have a problem with that idea <laughs> most of them <laughs> look at you look at you but to rescue hata kama hivyo the minister because what people think runs the world is not what runs the world it's not the physical things of life it's the spirit things of life that run the world some of these people understand the spirit world they know how it works they know how to pay homage to spirits and those spirits are the ones that empower them to become what they are there's so much about the spirit world that people don't understand there's so much about your genealogy what everything that happens in life is controlled by spirits who consider your family constitution in the spirit every family every village every county every country there's a spiritual constitution that runs it the same way we have a constitution for our country even the president has to follow that constitution in the spirit there is also spiritual constitutions there's a constitution that runs your family and that's why there are some families that are just wealthy even if you don't work somehow things just work for you because your spiritual constitution empowers you and spirits pay attention so much into details of what your constitution says there are some families that are just poor their gra- grandfathers their great 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 grandfathers or great grandparents were poor they have continued to be poor that family lineage is just poor because their constitution dictates that they cannot go beyond a particular place and in the spirit there are levels yeah. there are levels and these levels are governed by spiritual policemen spiritual policemen are the ones that conduct every entry the same way if you i mean when i was coming in here there was a soldier there that asked me where are you going to to see who you know and they had to make sure that you know they they've taken record of me take. in the spirit the same happens Any time you want to close a deal you want to get that promotion you want to get that business going through 
in the spirit. There are spiritual police that look into your constitution. Is this person allowed to go beyond this particular level? Is their family lineage allowed to go beyond this level? If you're not allowed, that's why deals fail. That's why promotions don't come. That's why your marriage doesn't work. That's why things are not just working. Not because your boss was bad, not because your spouse was bad. Mm. It has to do with your constitution in the spirit. And so people that understand that concept of spiritual constitutions, they know how to navigate those spiritual constitutions. They know what to do spiritually yes. to upgrade themselves. Because unless you are upgraded spiritually, you can never be upgraded physically. So there's a way to break it. Exactly. Mm. That's why you, you need to break some curses that probably follow your family. You need to break some curses that probably follow an environment you're living because an environment can actually have a curse. And that's why it is the way it is. Because a lot of people are living naive, ignorant. And that's why the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Uh, God doesn't say people perish. He says, my people. So he's talking about the Jews. He's talking about the Christians. Some of us Christians, we don't understand how the spirit world works. We are ignorant. When you're ignorant of the law and you go into a court of law, your ignorance doesn't play a part. You, you are ignorant. The judge is not going to rule based on your ignorance. He's going to judge based on the law. And so the spirits will not treat you based on what you know or you don't know. They'll treat you based on what does the law say in the spirit. <laughs> does the law say that you're supposed to go up to this level? Mm -hmm. Are you supposed to be a manager or is your lineage allowed to go beyond this level? If not, no matter how hard you work, no matter how smart you are, no matter how beautiful you are, you cannot go beyond a particular level because there are some spirits that are policing to make sure that you don't go beyond them. And so this is something that, and, and I'm tossing this out there. Let's get more informed about the spirit world and how it works. Because unless we are, then we'll forever. it's not hard work. Yeah. <laughs> It's Let not. no one lie to you. Uh, how hard you work uh, is not as important as how empowered you are in the spirit. Even the Bible says the race is not for the swiftest. The battle is not for the strong. So if the Bible actually confirms it, and this is Solomon, the wisest man that has, that has ever lived, saying that, he saw in the spirit. That guy was empowered spiritually to understand the spiritual things of life. And so whatever he wrote, he wrote it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for that. I, <laughs> I, I can see people nodding, even the ones <laughs> who are watching. They are, you know, they are nodding. But that, that, thank you for that. Th this you know? conversation has become very spiritual. No, it's good. <laughs> That's what the purpose was. Yeah. It's having its purpose. But yeah. when you look at your music, when you look at the songs you've done, mm. when you see the work you recorded, how does that make you feel? Oh, mm, well, uh, I did what I did. I've done what I've done. Um, I did what I could. Mm -hmm. and sometimes I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. You know, when I look at it from here. Uh, but I'm glad I did it. Um, you see, you cannot change your past. You can only change your future. You don't have power to change your past. What I did right, what I did wrong, that will never change. But question is, what can I do? And that's, that, that for me is what I'm focusing right now. Mm. What can I do? Where can I go? How can I impact souls? That for me is more important. Right now. But I'm, I'm proud that I did what I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think a lot of people dwell on the past? A lot of people dwell on the things they felt like, I didn't get this one right. I didn't get... Do you think we waste so much time there? Well, of course, a lot of people focus so much on the past. And they don't understand that there's really nothing you can do about your past. Your past is gone. Your, your past is your past. You see, most of these uh, psych psychiatrists mm -hmm. and psychologists, you know, most of them will tell you, you know, you need to talk about what happened. You need to talk about what you went through because that is going to relieve yourself. I don't believe in that. For real? I don't believe in that. Because here is what happens. The Bible says, there is nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. 
Life is a cycle. Wow. Why? Because life is conducted and driven by spirits. Mm. Why am I talking about the constitution? Because when you have a bl- you come from a particular bloodline, there are spirits that run that bloodline. There are policemen in the spirit that run that bloodline. Discover a homely haven at Ocean View Ridge in Vipingo by Optivan. Visualize your dream coastal home. Call us today on 0790-300-300. And they're the ones who keep the cycles going. They keep the cycles going. So what happened yesterday happened because there's a spirit that influenced it to happen. When you die, that spirit will continue that cycle with another person from your bloodline. And so if you keep focusing on the past, what you're doing is you're collaborating with that spirit to take you back to that particular spot. Why? Because spirits don't live inside time, they live outside time. Spirits are eternal, they don't die. But we live inside time. So a spirit can actually look at at 10 years ago as if it's right now. So when you start talking about a situation that happened and you start focusing on it, that spirit will collaborate with you to actually make you feel what you felt that particular time because he has the advantage of being in a timeless space. You are inside time. So when you start talking about it, you start feeling, you know, those emotions and those feelings start coming back. And the more you dwell there, the more that spirit takes advantage of pushing you down. What you actually need to do is focus on the good things of life. I decided I wanted to do what we call personal growth, personal development. Because personal development helps you focus on your future. You know, I have been doing a lot of courses, a lot of courses in, 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 in the last three, four years. Mm-hmm. I've done a lot of courses yes. because I want to develop myself. I want to become better. I want to see things from a better lens. Instead of focusing on what didn't work, what people say, where I failed. I mean, like you said, when some people were trashing me, it didn't feel good. But am I going to dwell on what they said? Hell no. That is gone. That's never going to come back to me. I can make my life better by improving myself, by focusing on positive things, by dwelling on things that are making me better, by, like I said, taking courses that improve my skills. You know, Um, I've done courses on sales, marketing, branding. I've done uh, courses on uh, negotiation. I'm done, I've done so many courses to improve myself. And based on that, when I go out there, even if I don't post, I am doing so much more than I probably was doing mm. when I was out there. <clears throat> Beautiful. Why say you quit music? Have you really quit music? Because <laughs> I got to ask this question mm. because I want to move to the business part of things, you know. But why say, because again, you've said this is a gift mm. given to me. At what point do we say, first, are we allowed to give up on gifts? Are we, right? Secondly, are you not, don't you miss that feeling? Don't you miss this? You know, just <laughs> like, don't, don't you miss it? Well, I, I, I didn't really quit music. Mm-hmm. Mm, I probably went on a break. I don't yeah. know for how long. But you said, you said I've quit. No, no, I didn't say I quit really? music. I, they put it down. It's, it's, it's the media that said I, I said I quit music. Okay. I, I said I went on a break. Uh, and that break, I don't know how long it would be. Mm-hmm. Um, what I can say is I'm in a very good space right now. Yeah. Um, I love my life. You know, I'm taking a lot of time to, to study. I, was, I usually have a, a timer. Yeah on how many hours I've studied. And can I surprise you? The other day I checked on the system and I realized I've done, uh, mm, I've done seven, 700, the last time I I checked, I've done 735 hours of study. That that means I've put in a lot of information, a lot of knowledge in me that I want to be able to share Mm -hmm. uh, to the world. Mm Um, am I going to come back to music? I don't know at this point, honestly. Um, 
But if God allows me to, sometimes I miss those moments. Yeah. And I remember one day, eh? you tell me, Manzina, you can't wait. December moja, 31st. Hmm? Nilikuwa na show nene. Nilipiga show Nairobi, mbili, nikaenda na Ivasha. Nikapiga show. Usiku, 31st. I, 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 I drove uh, to Naivasha one hour from Nairobi at night. Tulikuwa tunenda 160. Tukarudi, tukapiga show ya nene. Baya subui, nilikuwa na 800k. Easy. Yo siku mazi. Yo siku ili nibamba sada. Lakini ya mindi lelala siku tati. Well, I miss those moments. I miss moments when, you know, I would be on stage and people would sing my songs. Sometimes people send me clips of my songs playing in an event yes. and people dancing to them. You know, yeah. it feels good. Uh, I love, I, I still love music. Um, I have recorded a lot of songs. I have, mm -hmm. I mean, if I wanted to come out with songs, I would come up with maybe three albums at a go. Because mm -hmm. I still have a stock of many songs. Good. I don't know if I'm going to release them. I don't, I, I just don't know, to be honest. Uh, but if God leads, maybe I will. Yeah. Um, I think right now my focus is on personal development, mm -hmm. but also on helping other people. Um, and especially in, in, in regards to jobs. Yeah. I've assisted thousands of people currently. Yeah, let, so let's, far. let's talk about that because it's an area of yeah. interest for mm -hmm. me. I think anyone who is watching, people have heard me say I was in Gulf, you know, I was in Dubai, I was in Qatar. Mm -hmm. I saw the other day a video of people showing the real life in Gulf. They were in a bed space or something, mm -hmm. if you know those places mm -hmm. where they have the deckers. And yeah. when you are tamakin, you got to put up with that environment yes. for a while before right. a breakthrough comes, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm interested in getting the correlation between you and getting people jobs, you know, outside the country the way we were saying, what's the why? What drove mm. you there? That's a very good question, Ling. Mm -hmm. You see, when I was um, at the verge of the peak of my career, I started asking myself, what can I do that can physically impact people? Well, I impact souls with my music. They buy my music. I mean, even up to today, I still enjoy monthly payments from yes. Skiza. Yeah. Um, so, Yes, people enjoy my music, but it works for me more probably than it works for people because if you listen to my song, the far it can go is inspiring you or making you have a good feeling or enjoying. But I started asking myself, what can I do to impact a life physically, you know, in tangible ways? And so when I was thinking about that, I met this guy who introduced me to... Um, international jobs then he explained to me what yeah. what happens and how mm -hmm. it goes and when he did it, it's it was like a light bulb moment for me i was like this is it there are so many kenyans who are jobless there are so many kenyans who need a livelihood and if i can just impact those lives by helping them get a job then i've impacted not only them but probably their families mm -hmm. lean for the last four years, I think, is it four years or three years since COVID, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, um, yeah, four. Four years, right? Uh, I think I've, I've helped more than 3,000 Kenyans get jobs abroad. Those Kenyans have saved. Some of them have come back. Actually, many of them have come back. Uh, we are actually in the process of processing others to go back, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for a second term. But what really, what really keeps me going and motivated about this is the fact many people will call me and tell me, Jim, thanks that you changed my life. Now I can pay school fees for my kids. I can help my family. I have saved quite a bit of money. Uh, this week I'm processing um, a lady who came back and she told me she saved 400000 uh, in a period of two years. Mm -hmm. She was like, if I was still here, I wouldn't have saved that kind of money. And so they now want to go back into a better job. Yes. When I look at that, for me, it keeps me going. It keeps me wanting to assist yeah. more and more Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And as much as it's not an easy industry, 
um, it has a lot of controversies. But here's the thing, there's no, there's no industry that doesn't have controversies. Every industry has the good side and the bad side. It's you to choose which side you want to be at. If you want to play on the bad side, then that's you. If you want to play on the good side, then that's you. But for every counterfeit, there's always the original. So for me, I try as much as I can to play with the originals, to be on the positive side, to be on the good side of this industry. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, I also have a name to protect. So uh, my experience has been amazing. I have learned a lot of things, the good and the bad, how to and how not to. Um, and so I have vast knowledge on international jobs. And many Kenyans, especially, who don't have that knowledge, sometimes they get taken advantage of by agencies. some of the agencies. Mm -hmm. um, they are good agencies, I can tell you. They are very, very good agencies in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> there's corruption in Kenya. They are good you know, government people, but they are also bad government people. Mm -hmm. Every sector has good people and bad people. So as much as we have good agencies, we also have bad agencies that mess up people, that take people's money, that take people for a ride. Yesterday, someone called me and she was like, please, Jimmy, can you help our daughter? She went to Dubai and uh, she, she still hasn't gotten a job and we paid X amount of money and she's frustrated. And I asked them, how much did you pay? Oh, we paid 180,000. So why did, doesn't she have a job? Because if she paid, she should be having a contract. Because if you pay, you must get a contract. But many people don't understand how these things go. Really? Exactly. You see, these jobs are in categories. They are free jobs. The Saudi Arabia job for house, uh, house helps is free. Someone doesn't pay for anything. Uh, you don't pay for your passport. You don't pay for nothing, even for, for training. It's free. But that's the only job that is free. Yes. Most of the jobs that you will go outside the country, you have to take care of the cost in what, most cases. What cost are we I'm asking because I need clarification because mm. I know a lot of people might be interested. Yes. So pole pole, what costs am I catering for? I want to go to Dubai right now. I'm looking uh, for a job as a waitress. Mm -hmm. What do I need? Let me first take you back to how are these jobs secured? Yeah. You're an agency, you want to get contracts. You have to travel to Dubai or whatever country, Australia, US, um, New Zealand. I'm mentioning the, the countries yes. that um, I'm predominantly yeah. who are, you know, mm -hmm. securing contracts. Uh, Middle East, mm -hmm. New Zealand, Australia, USA, Canada. You have to travel there and go round and round looking for jobs, looking for contracts. That costs a lot of money, number one. By the time you're signing a contract to get uh, employees from Kenya, yeah. you've already spent a lot of money as, as an agency. Once you secure that, some of these companies will also ask you to deposit some money as security that you can actually deliver. Because most of these agencies abroad are very big. They don't want to work with agencies that can deliver. Delivering people is not easy. Getting people who can who can come and go is not easy. So there's a lot that is involved. Now, the reason people pay is because there are costs involved like visas, like air tickets, like um, the processing costs. You have an office, you need to pay for that office. I mean, let's be realistic. You can be helping people get jobs, right? They go make money. Yes you're not making anything out of it as you're a business good but here's the thing there's a very thin line between a business that exploits people and a business that helps people a business that helps people will not be exorbitant mm -hmm. they will quote figures that are reasonable like if you're going to qatar and someone tells you oh you need to pay three hundred thousand, i mean you know it doesn't it doesn't add up if you're getting a salary of seventy thousand and someone is asking you for 150,000. It literally, it makes sense makes because sense. in two months you'll recover your money. Yes. That includes air ticket, 
that includes processing costs, that includes visa. And them finding you that job. And, and them finding you that job, right? If you're going to Australia, for instance, and you're getting a job for half a million per month, a salary, it, it's okay for you to pay, let's say, 350000 Yes. Inclusive of air ticket. Yes. Because even you, if you personally want to go to the US, you have to take care of all the costs, right? And sometimes when you're going as an individual, you have to go there, connect with people, try and look for jobs. Yeah. Sometimes you don't get them in time and you end up being frustrated. The advantage of going through a good agency is that they've already secured a contract for you. By the time you're leaving the country, you already have a contract at hand. Mm -hmm. You know which company is going to uh, uh, employ you. Yeah. You know where you're going to be living. Mm -hmm. You have all those details, so you don't have the hassle of going to look for a job. And that's the value you, you have to also pay for, mm -hmm. right? So most people are not educated or are not informed on how these things work. And that's why, number one, they'll probably end up in the wrong hands yeah. because how do you know that this is a legit agency? Most people don't know. Um, how do you know that I'm supposed to pay X amount of money? Mm -hmm. Most people don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's where I personally come in. I help a lot of people identify good agencies um, and get the right contracts. Yeah. Because I've seen many people lose a lot of money because they were swindled. The other day someone came to me, they had paid uh, 1.5 million to go to, to the UK and someone swindled them. They are not picking calls. So when I asked them, what process did you use to get these jobs? I was like, oh, that's why you were swindled. Mm. Because there are things you didn't pay attention to. So for the last three years, I've learned a whole lot about how these jobs work. It's a very good industry. That's why you see the president going into all these countries, yeah. uh, like Germany, like uh, Qatar, Saudi, securing for jobs. Because truth be told, Kenya cannot and does not have the capacity to employ everybody. We, we have a, a serious, serious crisis yes. with jobs. True. So there are people who can go outside the country, but there, there is also a very huge majority that would want to go out, but they don't know how to. Mm. And, and many Kenyans, when, for instance, an issue comes up, like the Saudi Arabia cases, they'll talk and talk and say, oh, our children are going there to be butchered and things like that. Yes. I am not denying that some of these things happen or they've happened. But many Kenyans don't know why these things happen. And so they generalize based on a lady came out and said, oh, niliteswa, nilifanyo hivi. But do they really know the story behind it? Like we were saying the other day, we've been having cases of women being butchered here in our country. The international media, when they capture what our local media is airing in regards to that, how would their headlines be? Women being butchered in Kenya. <laughs> True. So if you've never been into Kenya, you are in Zambia or Zimbabwe or whatever country. Yes. You see that headline. What, what does that tell you about Kenya? They butcher women. Exactly. But how many women have been butchered in Kenya? It's the media that has made it go out of proportion in terms of, you know, they're talking about it every day, they're hearing it every day. It is necessary. It is necessary. One soul, whether it's one soul or two souls, yes. it is important. I because agree. Because this is a life, right? No, 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 no. Uh, Lynn, get mm. me right. Okay. I'm not saying it's not necessary. Mm. I'm just saying. It's how it's been. Can we also, I mean, why, why is it that we don't, we don't read or see a whole lot of negativity coming from the U.S.? We, we see U.S. as the country of opportunities. It's how they market their country. The dream country. Right? For everyone. Yes, these issues happen. Fine. Every country has their own issues. But can we also report in a way that it doesn't necessarily taint the entire country? Can we, can we be more responsible when we are reporting as a mm -hmm. media? Mm -hmm. So that out there, people don't look at our country and see, you know, this is a country that is mm. stereotyped as this kind of country, yeah. you know. And that, 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 that is pretty much what has been happening, mm -hmm. especially with Saudi. And I'm not, I'm not here to defend Saudi. No, 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 no. I'm here to be neutral and say these things do happen. The problems that people see online about Saudi, they actually happen. These cases happen. But the question is, why do they happen? Some of them happen because 
an agency didn't do their part. So a lady goes there and they're in problems. You take someone there, you're not following up. They're in a problem, you don't follow up as an agency. That woman will have a problem. Mm -hmm. And you see, because they're in a far country where they can't hop in a, into a bus and go home. They don't have relatives, they don't have friends. The only place they have is social media yeah. to vent out, to look for help if an agency is not following up to help them. And that's when those stories leak out. Mm. Some of them happen because you went there and you misbehaved. So if you misbehaved, you probably pulled out of where you're supposed to be at, you know, working in a particular house. Yes. You go out as a care boy, then you might have problems because if you get sick, a hospital will not treat you. Good. Because you don't have the necessary That's documents. True. That's true. Right? Yeah. But it's you that fleed. You made that choice. You made that choice, right? So if you get problems, they they never come to say, oh, it's because I fleed. So another problem is because maybe a lady had an issue. Mm. Another problem is because the employer was bad. The employer is naturally bad. Yes. Even here we have employers who mistreat right. their house helps. Mm -hmm. It happens globally. So if you come across such an employer, you probably have problems. All said and done, we must be responsible as agents. We must be responsible as people who are going to work there. And also follow up as a government on uh, the other governments where our people are going to. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Uh, yesterday, I was having a conversation with one of the agent agencies. And I can tell you, Saudi, right now, for the next long time, you will not have issues. Because these things have been streamlined. Streamlined completely. Lots of women are going to Saudi today. Over 2,000 are going every month. From Kenya? From Kenya. So, out of the 2,000, how many cases do we hear of? If every month, over 2,000 are going... Right? It means it's not necessarily what we think it is. Yeah. It's like the case of women being butchered here. How many women were butchered? Yes. Because the stories were so big. Mm -hmm. There are so many women here who are walking free, who are enjoying relationships, who are in good marriages. But we don't hear about them because yes. people are more inclined into negative news than positive, positive news. But could I ask you to clarify something Please. since we are here? Mm -hmm. When it came to issues, especially of women, mm. did you or did you not see the reason why many women are the ones facing these issues? It's because they misbehave more than the men. I think I was... I was mm, misquoted. Misquoted. I focused on probably one or two issues. And I said part of the reason, not all the time, but part of the reason is because some women misbehave which is true even here. Yeah. Some women misbehave. But you cannot generalize and say that all women misbehave. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, if there are over 2,000 women who are traveling every month, why then are we not hearing you know, hundreds of cases from Saudi Arabia? Right? It's because there are just a few who, number one, were taken by mm -hmm. bad agencies. Yes. Okay. So an agency did, uh, did a bad job, the woman is in a problem. Two, they met a bad boss. The boss is having issues with this person, and so this person has issues. Mm -hmm. Number three, a boss is probably advancing um, sexual favors from this woman. The woman is not strong enough to say yeah. no. And so she continues having affairs with probably the husband mm -hmm. until she's caught by mm -hmm. the wife, wife and hell breaks loose. Yes. Another reason, a woman probably advances the man and they have a problem, they are caught, mm. issues. Another reason, a woman flees from where she's working and she has issues, then it breaks out. Yeah. Um, another reason, uh, maybe the, the policies were not followed right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Another reason, uh, some agencies will take someone who doesn't even know how to speak English. You're from primary school, or you don't have education, they just want to make the money, so they take that woman there. She can't express herself. So when the boss is communicating, he's saying this, the woman is getting something different. And so she's always making mistakes. Yeah. 
And the boss gets agitated. He has to react to that, right? Even you, if you keep telling your house girl, oh, do this, clean here, cook like this, cook, but she can't understand and she always does something different, you will also get mad at some point. You get agitated, yes. So there are so many reasons, mm. but we can generalize and say that it's Kenyan women who are bad. No, 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 no. There are all these factors that contribute mm -hmm. into all it's this It's a 360. Problem, the 360. So yours is an agency? Well, yes, mm -hmm. but I also work with credible agencies. Okay. Right? Because you cannot run um, this industry on your own. Mm -hmm. You also have to rely on other agencies. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would say is, in terms of legitimacy, I'm very key on that. Okay. You know, in terms of making sure that every contract we, like when you see me posting a job, mm -hmm. we've already done due diligence. Mm -hmm. We know where people are going. Yeah. Um, like if we're taking people to Australia, like right now we have Australia, we have New Zealand, we have, we're actually taking people to Israel. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we, we have uh, Middle East, How much we have do the I need US. to go to New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> not me, I'm just asking. No, not uh, much actually. Mm. But what I would, what I would advise, mm. since I've given that information, if someone is interested, they yeah. can always come to my yeah. Instagram, okay. at Jimmy Gate Official. Yeah. Inbox me and tell me, I'm interested in this. Yes. Um, and you see, because I've, I've interacted with a lot of agencies, I know what many agencies offer. Yeah. So even if I personally wouldn't have an opportunity, I know who to call. To call. You know. Good. Eh? Networking is important. I love that. Yeah. How can I rough estimate here in New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> and not for like a waitress job. How much would I need? <laughs> mm, I'll give an example. Like yeah. um, uh, New Zealand, you can make like half a million yeah. every month mm -hmm. on average because you're paid $28 per hour. Okay. So on average per day, you can make 20000 right? Yeah. If you multiply that, and that's when you're working eight hours. Yes. If you if you do overtime, mm -hmm. you can actually make five hundred to six hundred thousand every month. Oh. Okay. So so if 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 someone is to pay a figure like three hundred and fifty, what do you think? It's good. It's fair, good, right? It's fair. Yeah. It's fair. Any scandals about the agency you run? Well, uh, here's the thing. Yeah. There's no agency that is perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, even you, you're not perfect. Good. What matters is when you have a problem, how do what you do you solve do? It? How do you solve it? Because I can't come here and pretend that I am all this perfect guy. I've never had issues. Mm. You know. No, that would be a lie. I've had issues. I've had women who've had issues. I've had cases where things have not worked the way they were supposed to work. Mm -hmm. But what I do is we have mitigation uh, uh, policies, mm -hmm. we make sure that if someone has a problem, because you, as long as you're living in this world, problems are inevitable. Yeah. We have a very quick response uh, uh, mm -hmm. mechanism. Mm -hmm. We respond very fast. If someone tells me I'm in this problem, we'll, we'll move very fast. Within a day or two, that it's case sorted. is sorted. Good. Because you can't run an agency that doesn't have issues. Mm. That, that's a lie. That's a lie. Okay. And I wouldn't come here and pretend like that. You know. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good. I know uh, it's the Instagram handle is on your screen, guys. I hope yeah. you get to help as many people yes, as please. possible. Yes. I love our audience. Yeah. I wouldn't They're want. Amazing. Yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> want to put them in places I can't trust. So yes. If they come, yes. please handle them Don't worry. with a lot Don't of worry. handle them because I know a lot of parents also get to watch this yes. show and they might be like, "Cause Lynn spoke to Jimmy, yes. I can try send my son or daughter." So you have to give us your word on Don't this worry. show that they will be in safe hands. Here's the thing. Um, Lean you're a public figure, yes. but I'm also a public figure. A true story. So we, we have names to protect. Yeah. So that's why I say before I post any job, You've I've done already done due my diligence. due diligence. Mm -hmm. I know all the parameters of the job. Good. And one of the policies I do is that I don't tell someone what I don't have. I don't tell what is not there. I'll tell you like it is. If you want to take it, fine. If you don't want to take it, it's still fine. It's still fine. But I want I don't want to tell I don't want to promise you what is not available. Good. I love that. Huh? Yeah. Good. Can I ask something? Please do. I know, I know what you want to ask. I know what you want to ask. I am not married. 
I know. Lean. So this is see me, 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 me. I'm asking on behalf I of my. Guy now. <laughs> I'm asking on behalf of my audience, you know. <laughs> hey. I'm not married. Hey. I don't know. Hey. I'm growing older. And I don't know. I don't know if I'll get married. I don't know. Why? Maybe I've not been uh, very lucky in this field. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been character developed. Mm -hmm. You? Yeah. You're not the one who has character developed? Uh, uh, well, oh, it's both ways. It's both ways. Okay. <laughs> Eh. Eh. Sasa sijui. Sijui ni kuwe kama Solomon ama ni kuwe kama Kwanza why did Paul say if you don't if you tell us why did Paul say if you can avoid marriage or something like that avoid what was Paul going through? Yeah, hata yeye alikuwa na maisha. Alikuwa na maisha hata yeye. Mwanaume ni mwanaume. Uko na hizo maajis. Yes. Sasa ina kina umana saa ingine. Yeah. So, no special person? Utigikia kwa uwe. Utigikia kwa uwe. I'm translating. There is something. Utigikia kwa kamodo. No, no, no. Kwaifaga pole pole. Ni kujipanga pole pole. But what qualities do you look for though in a lady? What qualities? I think for me, it's about compatibility. Um, and of course, you know, a smart woman intrigues me. Mm -hmm. you, you're a very smart woman, by the way. You think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I would marry you like yesterday. <laughs> I, would, I would not even, I would not even think twice. <laughs> Jim, we have spoken for, <laughs> but I appreciate, I appreciate. No, you see, hmm. there's, there's a physical beauty. Yes. Of course, you you have it. Okay. But there is an inside beauty. Yes. You know. You think I have that? Come on. But here's the thing: um, a beautiful woman is not just beautiful from outside. Yeah. But also from inside. Uh huh. Unazapadana nam nam si nam rembo sana inje, lakini anakupati a hell. Anakupe a hell. I read another quote somewhere. Hmm. A man will leave a very beautiful woman for an ordinary woman who gives me who gives him peace and he will cheat on the good woman who gives him peace with a beautiful woman. <laughs> hey, yes, amen. Man, what, amen. Hey, man. Unajua, mwanaume, anataka peace kwa nyumba. Lakini most of these beautiful women hawakupati peace kwa nyumba. I'm not saying all. Yes. And, and I don't want to be misquoted. Mm -hmm. But some of these beautiful women, they are so beautiful, yes. Like, you can get a new one. 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 They are high budget. Yes. High maintenance. Another friend of mine, I told you, Hey, I'm going to get a new one. She's too high budget, man. They are going to get a new one. They are going to get a new one. Anataka sijui kubai kiatu ya 10K, mara amekutuwa sijui nini. But what's wrong with that, Jim? What's wrong with giving your woman a nice vacation, nice shoes, nice bags? No, there's nothing wrong. What's wrong? There's nothing wrong. The wrong thing is when it becomes exaggerated. Or when they're asking from a man who doesn't have it at that time. You see, a woman should be able to understand what is the financial situation of my man, right? A woman that doesn't understand that and plays along with that, then will give the man a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. The man, of course, is supposed to go out of his way. However, it's also important to be considerate. As long as your man loves you, even if he may not afford some of the things, but he truly loves you, just support him, build him, work with him, so that eventually he can afford the things you want. Mm. But is equity a 10K, Unataka kiatu ya 7K. Na hiyo 10K, ndiyo saa hii, chakula, ndiyo sijui nini. No. Munaongea tu, munaona, mahesabu iko hivi na hivi na hivi. Tunajipanga na mnaina, mnaina, mnaina. Na lafu tukingoja. Yes. But many women don't want to wait. Unataka saa hii. And that's what you men are running away from. Yeah. 
sasa ingine inakuwa ni <laughs> so kwa hiyo kwa hard <laughs> why are you men now scared of relation who will marry us unajua sasa soko imeharibika ni ndio shida soko imeharibika <laughs> ai soko soko imeharibika how so unapatana na dem <laughs> Lakini wao dem ile kitu tu wanaona unajua women look for security. Mm-hmm. A woman wants security. A woman wants love. But a man thinks differently. A man is looking for stability. A man is looking for tomorrow. You know. So a man is working towards tomorrow. Many women want now. No. So that becomes a problem mm. when you're not willing to walk the journey with your man and unampatia pressure. Eh, mbona mbona hujanibaia gari hii Valentines? Eh? Mbona hujanipeleka uj, uj, wapi hii Valentines? Na huyu jamaa bana ana struggle. Eh? <coughs> Anaka kitu. Eh? Anaangalia if I spend 200,000 for a holiday, eh? This man if I put this 200k in a business. <laughs> eh? Akipiga hizo mahesabu azingiani. Yes. <laughs> But some women are not willing to understand that. And that's why sasa Unaona when the rubber meets the road kuna moshi. Mm. Mm. There is moshi. So relationships are not easy. Yes. Um I I don't know when I'll get married. Yeah. Does it bother you too? Sometimes it does. Okay. <clears throat> a man the number one need for a man is respect. The moment he doesn't feel respected, he'll go where he's respected. Yeah. Number two, if you don't look good for your man, that man has a need inito inito optical pleasure hmm? <laughs> optical pleasure if you don't give your man optical pleasure hey, my people <laughs> i wait what is that clapping like <laughs> if you don't give your man optical pleasure know what he likes he likes this kind of hairstyle he likes makeup or maybe he likes this or that he likes this kind of outfits dress for him the man will appreciate why this is natural men and optical pleasure are inseparable it doesn't matter whether you're a bishop or whoever you are hey. i don't care so all this pressure ni ya nini sasa mnataka kuwekelea wasichana sio pressure hiyo ndio iko kwa sababu hata wewe nisipokuambia i love you nisipokuambia nisipokupatia affirmations you look una nice feel, una feel like something this man has appreciate. changed because women like being appreciated. Mm. I want to know what people will say on the comment section also. Optical pleasure. About Because that. You <laughs> wanaume, wanaume nataka comment. Semeni is optical pleasure important? Ndio upate dem. No, wacha tuone. Kama 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 is my thing eh. Basi ni nitakuja hapa niseme I'm sorry. Yes. Optical pleasure. Uko na guarantee mko wengi. Ai 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 ai. Ai si unasikia hata hapa. Maneno imekubalika. You're such a vibe to talk to. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank Same you here. for making us mm. laugh. No, it's, it's... Can't believe you can take us from this serious <laughs> level <laughs> to cracking up man. Well, you know? Yeah. I'm all sided. I know, but I'm happy people got to see you again. Thank you. I'm Thank you happy. for having me. Now I'm happy they get to hear from you, you mm-hmm. know. You know, take your flowers. Thank you. I always say I ne- you know like I never want to be on the side of people who follow the majority. Mm. So I'm going to give you your flowers. Thank you. you have done an incredible job. I appreciate. In our industry also. Mm. You were a pace setter, mm. a pathfinder. Thank you. You helped a lot of people mm. come out. Dance, your music was mm. always like still feel good Thank no you. matter what. Thank you, you know, I don't want I don't want for you to maybe for your day to come and that's when everyone is saying no oh, Jimmy get this Jimmy get mm-hmm. you made us happy yeah. even as a school girl yeah. you honestly mm. you li, uli, uli mm. well, hey. and that joy Mbamba. yes mm. that joy no one can take it away Amen. the marks you left in people's yeah. hearts even the ones that are listening to your music for the very first time right. you did that you did that mm. by grace through faith you, you did that Amen. so receive your flowers thank you may Appreciate. all the desires of your heart mm. come true the good ones Amen. the ones that are godly mm. may they come true Amen. may you go out there and conquer 
Mm. I'm happy to hear you are doing something different. Mm. Honestly, I, uh, that conversation of jobs and agencies is something I would like to follow up. Yes. We could do something together. Yeah, we should. You know, this we platform should. is uh, yeah. it's open as long mm. as you treat my people with care. Yes, yes, yes. And definitely. they never come back mm. to say, Lynn, mm. this and this. If there is a job, let me know. Mm. I'm going to tell them also. Fantastic. You get it, mm. but Jimmy, you, 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 you are that person. Thank you. And I, I I'm happy to see you smiling. Honestly, <laughs> I'm really happy to By see you. By the way, a lot smiling. of people think I'm this serious guy. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. But I have the funny side. You have the optical <laughs> side. The optical. <laughs> The you, have, side, eh? you have the optical <laughs> side, but I appreciate you. Thank but you. It, before I wrap it up, mm -hmm. anything you want to add to the conversation <clears throat> that you think I've left out? Um, no, no, I think I think we've said pretty much a whole okay. lot. Mm -hmm. uh, most important, like I said, yes. uh, let's focus more on what can you as an individual do without focusing on other people. Yeah. Be you. Don't wait until people tell you, you are this, you are that. You see, um, don't wait until you're congratulated by people uh -huh. for you to know that you're doing something meaningful. Yeah. As long as you know that what you're doing is what you yes. ought to be doing, yeah. they just focus on it. Put all your energies there. Because where focus goes, energy flows there. Yeah. Where energy flows, there's productivity. Mm -hmm. Where there's productivity, there's progress. Where there's progress, there's success. Good. So just do you focus Trust in God, believe, mm. and yeah. the sky's got to be the limit. Yeah. I want you to talk to someone. There is a lot of cyberbullying going on. Yeah. on. I, I think mm -hmm. even in your time, it was a bit better, you oh, know? Okay. I think there's some free Wi-Fi somewhere <laughs> being accessed by the wrong people. Yeah. But anyone that is going through something, even if it's <coughs> a, a creative or someone in their space is trying to do what they gotta do but they are facing all this cyberbullying what do you want to tell them cyberbullying is two-sided mm -hmm. there's a keyboard warrior and there's a recipient so to the keyboard warrior i would say this before you click fikiria it could be you next time it could be your mother it could be your sister it could be your boss it could be your business targeted how would you feel always ask yourself mm -hmm. If you can put yourself on the side of the recipient, ask yourself, if someone would say what I'm about to say to this person, how would I feel? Yeah. I think that that would really bring you into a place where you're like, no, nah, I don't think it's worth mm -hmm. it. If you're the recipient um, and you're getting all these backlashes, it's, it's okay for you to not go through all those comments. Just pull out. You know, if you need to take a break from social media, do that. I think it's important. Because the more you keep hearing those negative things, they you're human. They will affect you. Yeah. Instead, focus on positive things. Listen to positive things. Listen to positive music. Mm -hmm. Be around positive people, people who love yeah. you. This is what I say. I always go where I'm celebrated, not where I'm tolerated. I don't hang out with people who tolerate me. I don't need them. I want to be with people who celebrate me because they can see my value. And if you can't see my value, I'm sorry. But here's the thing. There are so many others who see my value. So I'm not going to focus so much on people who don't see my value. Mm -hmm. I'll focus on those that see my value. Good. Go where you're celebrated. Not, not where, where you're tolerated. tolerated. Mic drop. I'll be our to Angu Bye. And also remind them where they can find you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for watching this show. Uh, at Lynn Googie. Keep following Lynn Googie. She's an amazing woman, beautiful woman. And if you want to find me, you want to find um, international jobs, you need help, you need advice, look for me at Jimmy Gate Official and I'll help you and I'll guide you. Thank you so much. God bless you and I love you. Good. Bless you too. Amen. Thank you, Kwakubariki <laughs> Studio. Thank you for blessing our studio. <laughs> hey, my people, I, I know you are commenting already through your take home on the comment section. I, yeah. I hope above all things, you guys have really been inspired. A lot of deep, you know, a lot of deep things that we've discussed on the show. Even for me, I feel like I leave this conversation replenished. I feel like I'm very rejuvenated, even from a spiritual angle. Sometimes it's always good to listen to people who are 
steps ahead of us and I hope you get really to be inspired by uh, Jimmy's uh, story and whatever it is that we've discussed. I believe it has served the purpose it was meant to serve. Thank you so much to Mecheka. Sometimes that's the beautiful part about these shows. You get to laugh, you get to cry, you get to feel all sorts of emotions but above all we get to give God the glory and we keep appreciating him for this gift and not the gift itself. Uh, let me know also, on, also if you want to share your story with me info at lnn.digital that's where you can find me you want to connect with jimmy his social handles are on your screen and pinned on the comment section and also to say thank you to our people at optiven for always coming through and partnering with us sponsoring this episode you want to check out a piece of land a piece of property and you want to do it with a credible um company why don't you talk to them i keep saying they don't sell you land they sell you positivity they sell you transformation they sell you good things we've been in their places nakuru um kagundo they have beautiful properties for you so just check them out and uh the property of choice today is a uh, ocean view ridge in vipingo malindi it's a retirement plan for you uh, so you can always check them out one Mukienda uko pige number or lize optiven what do you have for me and how can I go about the payment? And also to say thank you to the incredible team, the people you hear on the background. Leo Muga, Edwin, Joshua, I don't know what a sim club to basi show yeshe. <laughs> yeah, those are the optical visual, nini, the optical humans that are clapping. So thank you so much to the wonderful team that gets to put this work together. Our producers, our editors, the entire management at LNN. You get to see me on camera, but it takes an entire village to put this work together. I appreciate you guys. Continue subscribing goes a long way. Let's get to that one million subscriber by grace through faith. To onaneni kesho at 10 a.m. Jimmy, all the best. Mi unialike ya rusi intakuja. Umenu na umenu ruka hivu. Sijakuruka. Bye, my people.